Hey what's up guys I'm Nitesh and in this short video I will explain to you what is the interface segregation principle and why we should be always on the lookout for application of this principle when designing our projects Interface segregation principle is one of the five solid principles of object oriented design of application and it's important that we understand its advantages and some disadvantages as well of its extreme use So what does interface segregation means and why we should do it Consider a scenario when there is a class implementing an interface but only really needs to implement some of the interface methods What this means is the class will have to provide empty implementations of interface methods which it is not going to use This is a problem when a class has empty methods just to fulfill the contract specified by the interface that the class is implementing for this exact problem interface segregation principle comes into picture interface segregation simply means subdividing an interface into two or more logical sub interfaces which classes can implement without having to provide empty method implementations let's now see a very simple code example in which i will show you why we need to segregate any existing interface So suppose we have an interface which is called as my interface. Now this interface has a number of different functions. So let's just number them from one to let's say we are going to have five different functions. So one, two, three, and four, five functions. Now suppose that we have two classes. So let's just call them as class 1 and class 2 and both of these classes are going to implement the contract requirement of my interface so my interface but the important thing to note over here is the actual functions which both of these classes class 1 and class 2 are going to be using Class one over here only needs to provide the implementation for function one and function two, but class two over here will need to provide the implementation for functions three, four, and five. But because they are implementing the entire interface and all of the five functions are part of the contract of this interface, they will also have to provide empty function bodies for the functions which they are not going to use. So for class one. it is going to use function 1 and let's just provide a comment over here to show that this function actually contains some logic which this class is going to provide so code logic goes here and similarly for function 2 i can just copy and paste this thing and then just rename it as function 2 but for the functions which this class 1 is not going to use which are function 3 4 and 5 we have to provide empty implementations so public void function 3 now whenever we have to write an empty function or a function with an empty body then we always have to throw a new not implemented exception so that whenever this exception will be raised then we will know that this function is not implemented so let's do this for functions 3 4 and 5 so you see the problem over here right class 1 only needs to use functions 1 and 2 but will have to provide empty implementations for 3 4 and 5 similarly class 2 only needs to implement functions 3 4 and 5 so i'm just going to rename them but class 2 will have to provide empty implementations for functions 1 and function 2 the problem over here is whenever we are using these classes then they are going to have empty function implementations and it is very easy to get confused if a function or a feature is exposed by a class or not so it's not really a good idea to use interfaces like this and the better approach is to subdivide this interface into two different logics or two different parts the first part is only going to have functions 1 and function 2 and the second part is only going to have the contract for functions 3 4 and 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this interface over here and let's just call it interface one and interface two. I'm going to remove functions three, four and five from over here and let's just remove function one and two from over here. And then the class one is going to implement interface one and class two is going to implement interface two. And then we will not have to provide the empty implementations for the functions, which these classes are not going to expose. So we can safely remove them. And this is the better approach. This is the simplest way in which we can understand or implement the interface segregation principle. So again, in short, the interface segregation principle says that classes should not be forced to implement interface methods which they are not going to use. You must be thinking why does this situation will even occur when we will design any interface, keeping in mind its exact utility. Well, sure, interfaces are created for exact functionalities, but if we are not paying attention, then an interface will quickly start to include more methods as the project goes further into development. And then there can be situations where new implementing classes will not need everything an existing interface has to offer. So you may have to from time to time make a design decision whether you want to segregate an interface or not. If segregating an existing interface is really not possible, then you can either just keep it as it is and provide empty function implementations or there are a couple of other ways to only have the functionality which the class needs such as by using the adapter pattern. Let's now see another example which will help you to understand this principle in a much better way if you are still confused about it. Suppose that we have an interface for a fast food center menu and this interface contains contracts for four functions. First one is to make a pizza, second one is to make fries and then there is a function for making a cold coffee and then an espresso. There are two types of employees in this fast food center. One of them is only going to handle the solid foods or any non-beverage items. And then the second employee is only going to pay attention to all the orders which are beverages like cold coffee and espresso. So you can see both of these employees will have to implement the interface fast food center menu. But because they are not going to provide implementations for the functions which they are not using. The contract of this interface is still not fulfilled by both of these classes. And one way to do it is to provide empty function implementations of the ones which they are not using. But instead of doing that, we can subdivide or segregate this fast food center menu interface into two new interfaces. One of them is going to be for non-beverage menu and another one is going to be for a beverage menu. Now we can safely replace the fast food center menu interface with the ones which are actually specific to the type of the employee or the function of the employee. And there you go. All the errors are removed and these employees will not have to provide empty implementations of the functions which they are not going to use. Segregating an interface is not always possible. It should ideally be done at design time. There is, however, one problem with extreme application of interface segregation principle. We run the risk of ending up with interfaces with only one methods. If not implementing carefully, then interface segregation can also result in unnecessary complicated code where we have a single class implementing a number of different interfaces for their functions. Also, interface segregation principle is applied at design time. If the interfaces are already created and in use, then the adapter pattern can also be used to segregate interfaces based on limited use of their functionality. So this was all about interface segregation in this video. I hope that you now have an enhanced understanding on this topic. But if you think you have any questions or doubts, then feel free to use the comments area and post your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Nitej and I will see you next time. Till then, stay safe and have fun.